to a guy that I have right here. Um, well, it's really uh, my pleasure to, to again bring you some uh, uh, life changing information tonight. <clears throat> this, uh, this information that, that I'm, I'm presenting, I, I want you to understand, I, I didn't seek out to uh, acquire a knowledge of this information so that I could share it with you. <laughs> I set out to acquire this information so that I could share it with me. And in the process of sharing it, as these truths became evident to me, I got healed. I got healed of seven reconstructive spinal cord operations, two heart operations, uh, disability. Uh, been, been given up <laughs> by my colleagues in medicine. Uh, as one of the young cardiologists, brilliant guy, put his arm around me and said, well, Dr. Bishop, there's nothing more that medicine has to offer. I said, well, thank you, sir. I understand that, but I'm going to go get healed. And he said, well, what do you mean? I said, I'm going to change my mind. And, and he looked at me and he said, well, you're going to change your mind? What do you mean by that? I said, I'm going to immerse myself in the word. And uh, he said, I've never heard that before. <clears throat> and I left. And I, and I came back to, to share this uh, with him. Of course, he, as most of the other cardiologists that I see, were, were just blown away. The cardiologist I saw when I was in Colorado Springs going to Bible college, after years of immersion in the Word, uh, I went in to see him for my usual yearly checkup. And I took with me all my records from the University of Wisconsin where I received all my medical care, and he walked in the office and he looked at the chart. And he said, he looked at me and he said, you're a dead man. I, I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> I've come to life again. And, and, he, and, and he shook his head and, and you know, I, I shared with him what, uh, what I'm, the synopsis of what I'm sharing with you. So I know this is uh, life-changing information. First of all, a couple of things. Uh, let me just uh, open with, a, with a, a short word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just uh, thank you for uh, everyone here. I thank you for the blessings that you've given us uh, in your word. And, and your, you've given us the ability to, to have knowledge of and have understanding and belief. And you've given us the capability to activate the power of faith that, that operates this entire universe. You've given us as, as simple human beings the ability to um, delve into these matters in the spiritual kingdom and, and literally take uh, direction and control of those factors, especially those factors in our own life. And I thank you for giving us your word and your son to guide us, and we just uh, thank you for the presence of them both here with us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, uh, there was a couple of uh, things I wanted to talk about from last time. One. After, after the talk last time, uh, Pastor Randy and I had a good conversation. He, uh, he asked me about uh, name it and claim it. And I'm sure you're all familiar with that movement in Christianity that occurred that got real weird and wacky. And like so many things that happens to us human beings, we, we take things like that. And uh, if you're like me, I stand back and I look at that movement and I wonder, you know, where did this person become mentally ill? <laughs> where did it happen? Uh, did they get dropped on the, their head at birth, or what, what was this? And so I, be, I immersed myself in, in people of, of, those, of that mindedness. And, and, and these people aren't mentally ill. <laughs> uh, but what happens to us in Christianity is we throw the baby out with the bathwater. We, we throw the importance of speaking the word. Not only God's word, but our word. Uh, God created the universe with his word. He spoke it out into the universe. You know, you, you and I as us as human beings, and I'm not talking about Christianity, I'm talking about science. You and I as human beings, I'm standing up here as a human being, I have two ways that I can affect the spiritual kingdom as a human being. One is by what I believe, which creates electromagnetic waves that are broadcast out into the spiritual field that will either, re, either attract God's will and his blessings into my life, or they will repel God's will and blessings into my life, depending on whether I'm in harmony with his word or not. And I have the vibratory frequency of sound. We speak. Our words. Do you know that every cell in your body listens to every word that you say? And especially, uh, look at, look at the, just the best example of this is the 
just the literal uh, epidemic of autoimmune diseases in our world today. Now, I, I've, studied, I've studied autoimmune diseases all my life. It was one of my, one of my things that I love to study in medical school was the immune system, because it's the sentinel system of the body. It's a protective mechanism. What on earth happens if the protective mechanism of the body turns against the body and starts to kill itself? I mean, it's like having the greatest army in the world, and all of a sudden, everybody, everybody turning around and shooting back at our headquarters. I mean, that, that just doesn't make sense. It violates every biological principle known to mankind. How does that happen? Well, that happens when a person's belief is such that they're giving the message to every cell in their body that they're not worth anything. You'll never measure up. You're, un you're unworthy. You're a sinner. Look at what your past has shown. You're just going to fall again. Why even get up? You might as well give up. When, when every cell in the body begins to hear that, the immune system says, hey, somebody's getting ridiculed. Somebody's getting, getting uh, taken to the task and taken to the carpet here. I better initiate all my mechanisms to kill that offending foe. And, and what is it? It's the person themselves. So the immune system turns around and starts attacking our joints with rheumatoid arthritis, our colon with Crohn's disease, our nervous system with multiple sclerosis and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Those autoimmune diseases are because we've been, to a certain extent, we've been telling our, ourselves that we're not worth anything. And if there's anything that you come away with from tonight, <laughs> you don't go away thinking that. So, our words count. Just read the book of Genesis. God said and he saw. He said and he saw. When you and I say, we can expect to see. Now that's Bible. You know, that's what it says in the Bible. In fact, that's, that's how Abraham won the blessings of God. He expected. He called those things that are not as though they are. He was expecting and anticipating. That's what the Bible says. Now, for years, I thought, well, that's hogwash. How in the world can that be? How can you expect something and have it come into being? Science today shows that when the human brain and heart are in a state of expectation and anticipation, we literally take things out of the spiritual kingdom. We can create a particle out of a wave. That's physics today. And it totally corresponds with what the Bible says. And that's the way our life is. Now, it took Abraham 25 years before he began to see the fruition of the promises that he was given in, in the birth of, of his promised child. But he expected and anticipated it. And again, like I said last time, that was reinforced by God. The way he set this system up is just the same way I'm trying to teach here. He, he, he reinforced that to Abraham every step of the way. He changed his name. So every time Abram gave his new name, Abraham, he had to hear himself that he was the father of all nations. So he was telling himself constantly he was the father of all nations. God compared it to the stars in the sky. Every night he looked up, he saw. He was reminded of what God had told him. He said, as the grains of sand are in the desert, every time he looked down, I don't know how many of you have been to Israel, but it's all sand. <laughs> That's all you see. So every time he looked down, he saw the sand. So he was constantly being reinforced by what he said, what he saw, what he heard. All those senses were reinforcing him so that he became fully persuaded of God's word. And that's why this what that's the end result of what I'm teaching here is that I want to bring people to a belief of, so that you're fully persuaded of God's word. That's all I care. I don't care. I don't want I don't want you to believe a thing I say. I, honest to goodness. <laughs> I don't care if you believe me whatsoever. And anything I say that's wrong and you show me, I'd be happy for you to show, show it to me because I want to say what's right. But I want to be fully persuaded of God's word. That, that's my only motive, my only agenda. And I'm not selling Bibles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, that was one thing. The second thing, uh, there was a question to me. Do the photons that I'm made of have an effect on people around me? I said, we're made up of these subatomic particles called photons that are not limited by space or by time. You take a photon out of Mark Bishop and you split it, and you take one of my photons and take it to Japan. This was the actual experiment that proved this. And you take the other and hold it in a physics lab in San Francisco, 
and you expose these one of these particles to an electromagnetic field which changes the spin of the photon, that's the life of a photon, is a spin either clockwise or counterclockwise, and as soon as that photon in San Francisco is changed, the one in Japan instantly changes. There's something that connects everything in the universe. So when, when you have a belief, not only does that belief affect every cell in your body, that belief affects everybody around you, everybody in this room. Okay, so how do I know that? Well, the HeartMath Institute has proven by taking the measurement of the electromagnetic waves coming out of the heart. I'm not talking about an EKG. Now, that's the electrical waves coming out of the heart. I'm talking about the electromagnetic waves coming out of the heart. And when a person is in a state of belief of faith, this is the waveform that comes out of the human heart. And that waveform That waveform can be measured for as far out as we have instruments to measure. Now, it won't measure from one end of the universe to another, which is how far it really goes, because we don't have the instruments that sensitive to do that. But your heart right now is sending out the electromagnetic wave. You know, back in, back in our day, you know, I just don't get the vibes. You know, we just don't have the vibes. Well, that was metaphoric, but it's not. <laughs> is actual truth. We, can, we have a vibratory sense in our body. It's our brain and it's our heart, it's our spirit that senses these waves. If you take that same person and put them in a state of fear, this is the, this is the waveform that comes out of that person's heart. Now they've taken cells, human cells and cell culture, and they've exposed them to this wave and they've exposed them to this wave. When they're exposed to this wave right here, at this frequency right here, which is the Schumann resonance, which is the inherent frequency of the Earth that we live on. When, when cells are exposed to this frequency, the frequency of faith, the frequency that God intended for us to live in, cells grow and divide and prosper. They regenerate themselves. They reproduce themselves. When those cells are exposed to this vibratory frequency here, which is equivalent to a state of fear, those cells get sick and die. Now that's not only science, but that is also a Bible. Deuteronomy 30:19. God told us his loving creation, I'm going to give you the choice. You can either choose to live or you can choose to die. If you choose to live, this is the way you should do it. If you choose to die, that's what's going to happen down here. And humans that constantly are in a state of fear die. Humans that are in a constant state of faith live longer. Now, we all die. We live in a fallen world. We have our molecules, our cellular structure. They all wear out. We're machines. They wear out because of the force of gravity and the natural forces of the universe. So, not only uh, do... do uh, these messages, information, gets sent to every cell in the body. This information gets sent to those people around us. They've done experiments where they've taken a, like four people at a card table. They, they've taken three people at a card table and they've asked them to get into a state of prayer. They've asked them to begin to focus on prayer. Focus on the loving nature of God. And lo and behold, guess what frequency came out of their hearts when they were in that state? This right here. So there are three people sitting at a card table. They're all in this state of faith. And they bring a person in that they have just made madder than a wet hen. And he is in this state right here. And they sit him down at that card table. And over a variable period of time, this person right here gets converted to this person right here. Beyond his conscious knowledge. It happens in the spiritual kingdom that he gets affected by those around him. And that's why it's so important that we are cognizant of those that we surround ourselves with. But more importantly, that's why it's so important for us as parents. And I don't, you know, I, I think the most common question I get really isn't about a person asking me about themselves. 
it's, it's people asking me about what do I do about my grandson or my granddaughter or what do I do about my son or my daughter. It's, it's always some loving family member. You know what the most important thing you can do for your grandson, granddaughter, or anybody in your family, anybody that you love, the most important thing you can do is to keep yourself in this state right here. You don't have to buy them a Bible. You don't have to beg them to go to church. You don't even have to mention church. You don't even have to mention the Bible. Your heart is going to have an effect on them whether you like it or not. <laughs> it's built into the universe. That's the way God created it. And he created us to have that influence and that effect on those that we love. He did that for us. He sent his son. It's the only, it's the only perfect faith that we've ever been exposed to on planet Earth. But he did that so that would affect us. Okay. So, uh, last time I, uh, let me see here, talked about, now this, this fog machine is God. And he is injecting, he just, he is speaking right now his word out into the universe. And this fog is his word. Now look, I am totally surrounded by, engulfed by his word. I am breathing that word in. It's going to every single cell in my body. The water molecules in this water vapor are going to every cell in my body. You're breathing it. It's going to every cell in your body. That means that every cell in your body is connected to every cell in my body, which is connected to the God. We're, we're all connected by this web of information that's called God's Word. Every human. Every human is, is uh, connected to that. The only way we become disconnected to it is when we don't know that that exists. It's dependent on our knowing it. It's dependent on our knowledge of it. You know, I used to think when I first became a Christian, I thought, becoming a Christian, I thought God acted like the autonomic nervous system that I never had to think about God again. That he would just spontaneously act in my life. He would just spontaneously act. Now see, that leads to the, the most deadly doctrine in Christianity today, which is to the sovereignty of God issue. That is, you sit back and, well, God's gonna do it anyway, so why do I need to do anything about it? That, 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 that's the doctrine that nearly killed me and, and my wife, Judy. And that's the doctrine that pervades Christianity today. And it has made Christians so passive that they have given up their rights that they have been given to them by God. Because, see, we, we've been enculturated into this doctrine of, of sovereignty that all you have to do is sit back and God's automatically going to work. Now, he does work that way through the autonomic nervous system to make your heart beat. He does. He works that way. That's the autonomic nervous system. But man has two nervous systems, autonomic and also peripheral. The peripheral system depends on my choices and my volition. I become a, I become a member of that equation. And, and that's the way God has constructed the universe. Um, one of the most common things, I, I remember uh, uh, Jude, Jude's dad was a, a Baptist minister. So we, uh, we uh, have always been in, in uh, Baptist churches, I hardly ever mention denominations, but since I'm in a denomination church, and a lot of times I'm not, I'm in a non-denominational church, I'll mention that. Um, but we had, we had a, we were going to our uh, Baptist church in uh, Wisconsin, and uh, we, we went through this uh, process of learning how to pray. Learning how to pray. And we were trained that at the end of every prayer, just to cover all bases, you say, if it be God's will. You know what that means? That is a surefire belief of doubt. Now, this is Christianity. Jesus said, what did he say about the, uh, Mark 11, uh, 23? He said, doubt not. You know why? Because doubt stops the flow of faith. Now, let me tell you something. That is not only Bible, but in studying the subconscious mind of man, where 95% of our emotional personality development originates, 
looking at looking at the active structure of the subconscious brain, the what the the uh, activity of the subconscious brain can be going 90 miles an hour, and as soon as that person gets in a state of mind of doubt, the subconscious mind immediately stops. And it's our subconscious mind that, that interacts with God. So that's not only science, that, that's also Bible. Doubt stops the, the mechanism of God. Now that doesn't mean that he, he still won't override that, but we want to be on the same team, don't we? We don't want to be pulling against God. And that becomes significantly paramount when we go through, as, as I go through and talk about how this information come, comes into us. Because we, more so than get at odds with somebody else, our first responsibility is to get it on the even playing field in and of ourselves, in our own self. But let me just, let me just look, at, look at some things here. Um, I just wanted to use some examples of, of how deceiving this concept can be. Because I, I heard this uh, many times, I've heard this. It's uh, told to me when I, when I have been uh, asking questions. Um, here it says, uh, in, in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard Neither have entered into the heart of God the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Now, I have heard many people advise me that when I'm trying to uh, understand and come to a knowledge of God, Mark, you're wasting your time. I have not seen, ear hath not heard. It's beyond the capability of humanity to understand God. You just can't do it. Well, if you stop reading the Bible at verse 9, that's what it says. But look at verse 10. It says, but God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. He's given us the Holy Spirit to give us that information. He didn't leave us hanging without that knowledge. And, and there, there, are, there are other examples. that, uh, but, but that's just one example I've heard a dozen times at the bedside when I've been... Uh, fighting and helping a person fight for their life that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, uh, there's no way you can understand God. Well, that's, that's just not true. God wants us to understand Him. In fact, in Romans, I mean, what we're, what we're literally doing here, right here is we're, we're looking at and learning mind renewal. And I just want to call to your attention what God's word says about mind renewal, and here, uh, Romans 12, 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That, that's what we're doing right now. Everybody that's <coughs> listening to this right now, whether you know it or not, you're actually renewing your mind. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and <coughs> perfect will of God. We can know the will of God, but it doesn't come without our <coughs> mind renewal. So there, we have to invest in this ourselves. We have to invest through information and knowledge and understanding. That's what brings us to this knowledge of God and to and have a knowledge of his will. Okay. Um, just one more thing about the, uh, about the vibratory universe we live in. Um, I was just sitting, just sitting in church this morning, um, looking, looking at uh, what was going on and looking at the order of how we communicate with God. You know, how do, how do we communicate with God? We communicate with God, uh, first of all, by praise and worship. And, and that's, that involves a vibratory frequency. When, when that violin was playing today, did anybody get a physical sensation from that? Where was where would, where did you feel that? Where did you feel that when that when that violin was playing today, and Spencer was singing? Where did you feel it? Your heart. Get back to it right here. This is one of the ways that God opens our heart to the entrance of His Word. It's indispensable in our process of mind renewal. And in our process of coming to know the will of God, we have to open our hearts. 
and, and God has provided us a way of doing that. In fact, do you realize uh, DNA, the great phenomenal molecule that God created to carry or to play all of the information of life. Now this, this magnetic plate here is equivalent to the DNA molecule. Now, there's information on this DNA molecule. Now, for 30 years of my life, I studied and I worshipped and I believed that there was something special about the color of those numbers and about the color of those letters that if I just sat here long enough, that they would automatically come in to make sense. molecule. This is the molecule that carries information. It's just an information carrier. Okay, the information is, is sitting on that molecule, but what did it take to make sense out of that information? It took an outside source of intelligence to arrange that information. In this case, it was me. But that's the way God has created all of life. He's, he's injected all this information. He's given us a molecule to carry it on, but it's his, it's his will and, and it's his intelligence and intellect that has uh, arranged this information so that it makes sense. Now, you and I as Christians have been put on here, put in this earth for multiple reasons. But one of those reasons is that we're like that DNA molecule. Do you realize that you are a carrier of God's word? That God's word is injected out into this universe. Do you know that sound waves don't travel in a vacuum? Sound waves don't travel in a vacuum. So what did God fill the vacuum with? To carry his word. created man to be the carrier of his word, if I can get back to it. Here's God's word out here, without man. This is man. He created this board as man. How many of you can hear God's word here right now? See, nobody can hear that. But when he injected this, it's out here, but you just can't hear it. See, he put man out here 